Good evening, children. So, children, I'm going to tell you the story of a farmer who lived a long, long time ago. His name was Mika, which means who is like God, and lived in the village called Morse. Daddy, look, we can make a whole bottle from this punch. Let me taste one. Hmm, this is really tasty. Don't eat too much, Atalia. It could upset your stomach. <laughs> Don't worry, dear. Let her enjoy the God's blessings. If we get such a good yield from olives and figs also, then we can repay our debts quickly. Don't worry about the debts so much. Our King Jotham is a kind man. Yes, he gave us this land. and he even gave enough loan to us he is as good as his father king uzia hmm who knows the way of the lord yes that's why i told you not to worry about the debts too much god will provide us lord god we praise you and give you thanks for blessing us with a good harvest mika worked day and night on his fields He hoped to repay his debts to his lenders by this harvest season. That day, after plowing the land, he was returning home. My car, my car. Huh? Oh, Abia, it's so good to see you. My car. I'd like to talk to you about something. Sure, Abia. What is it? Well, what do you think of a marriage between Jonah and Athalia? Jonah likes her very much, you know. <laughs> That's a wonderful idea. Why don't you come with me to my home, and I will talk to my wife about this. Abaya, it's so good to see you. Hello. How is your wife, and how is Jonah? They are all fine. Listen, go and sit inside. We have got something great to tell you. Listen, dear. Abaya has a proposal for our daughter. Huh? Who is the groom? I was asking Atalia for my eldest son Jonah. Oh, it's wonderful. <laughs> Atalia, Atalia, come here. Yes, mother. Atalia, we've got some wonderful news for you. What is it, mother? Do you know Abaya's eldest son Jonah? Of course I do. We used to play with each other when we were kids. Hmm. And now Abaya has got a proposal for you to marry him. Ha. Huh. Oh! She's blushing. <laughs> father? I heard what you were talking. It's a very good proposal, father. I know Jonah as a friend, and he's a good person. Hmm. Now that we all agree, Why don't we fix a date for the wedding? Of course. Do you have any dates in mind? How about Friday after next week? 6th day of the week. The day God created Adam and Eve. That's great. It's fine with me. All right. That's fixed then. Abaya, we'll meet at the fields tomorrow and we'll discuss other details. Of course. Let's meet at the field tomorrow. I leave now. Father, father. <sighs> What is it, son? Our king. <sighs> What happened, son? King Jotham died today. His son Ahaz has become the king of Judah. What? Oh no. King Jotham was a kind man. I wonder how our new king is going to be. He's so young and reckless. Hmm. A king was only 41 years old. May his soul rest in peace. My car, it's getting late for me. I must leave now. We'll meet tomorrow at the fields. Sure, Abia. See you tomorrow. And as they had planned, Jonna and Atalia was about to get married that day. Children, Remember to keep the promise you make today. Atalia, daughter of Mica, I promise to marry you according to the law of Moses. 
What is that sound? It's the sound of drums. It's the king's messenger. Listen everybody. These are the orders of King Ahaz. Syria and Israel have joined forces against Judah. All males between 16 and 35 must enlist in the army within a week. Oh no, my son. And all the money borrowed from the treasury must be returned immediately. Huh? How? But that's impossible. How are we going to pay our debts at such short notice? No. Why should we send our sons to get slaughtered? No. This cannot be real. God help us, please. Oh my god, both of my sons are leaving us. Mother, stop crying. We will defeat their army and come back soon. Father, bless us. Take care of your brother and come back alive, my son. We will, father. Don't worry. Mika's both sons left them that day to fight in the war. Mika then realized that he was seeing his sons for the last time as they were about to die in that war. My Lord God, please keep my son safe. Stop worrying, my dear. The Lord will protect him. Mm. But what about the debts? How are we going to repay within a week? Well, We'll have to sell the grain and everything we've got, but even that won't be enough. What are we going to do? I'm going to the market tomorrow. I will ask Laban to give me a loan. Only then can we save our land. Don't worry, dear. It's going to be all right. Yes, Lord God will never leave us. The next day, Mika went to the market for selling his goods. But it was a chaos there in the market. Farmers had to sell their products at cheap prices and the shopkeepers were making profits out of the situation. What? This is cheating. A shekel for 50 liters? Yes, the prices are going down. Didn't you know? But, but that's not even half the price. Listen, if you want to sell, then this is the price. If you don't like it, then you may go elsewhere. But please, I've had to work so hard to produce this. That's none of my concern. Now move aside. Let the next person come. Hello, Laban. Micah, my friend, what brings you here? Laban, I'm here to sell my goods and I also want to borrow some money. No problem. Show me what you have. Hmm, I can give you 200 shekels for these. What? 200 shekels? That's not even half the price. Listen, Micah, the prices are going down every minute because of the king's orders. Every farmer is desperate to sell their produce. But, but... You may check the prices with other shopkeepers here in the market. Nobody will be willing to give you as much as I have offered. All right, I'll take it. I have no other choice. Here is the money. While Mika had gone out to sell his goods, the soldiers came to Morshed to collect the taxes. Help! Help! Give us the money or give me your bangles. What? What is happening? Isn't that Mika's house? Yes, it is. What is going on? We have come to collect the taxes. Have you got the money ready? No, but my husband has gone to the market for selling our goods. We will pay back the money as soon as he comes back. Now? The deadline was yesterday. You need to pay now or give us your ornaments. How dare you talk to us like that? Go away. I'm not giving you anything. Let my husband come back and then and then we'll pay. Mother, mother, stop it. Uh, uh, leave me. Stop there, you. <laughs> this will be our share. We will come back tomorrow to get the 500 shekels. That's enough. We have got them. 
you can leave the boy now. Mother, mother, are you all right? No, we lost everything. Oh God, why? Oh, oh, it's robbery. The farmers had to sell everything for almost nothing. Hmm. Why is it so quiet here? Atalia, nobody home? Father! Father, you are home. Yes, what happened here? Why is it so silent? Oh dear, the king's soldiers were here when you were gone. King's soldiers? They came here to collect the taxes. But when I told them that we will pay tomorrow, they harassed the whole village and took our ornaments. Father, they were a bunch of thugs. They harassed mother and didn't let her go even when she pleaded. What? How dare they? There are laws in this land and even the soldiers must obey them. I'm going to the court tomorrow. I will ask the judge to take action against the soldiers who did this. No, dear. I don't think that's a good idea. They are king's people. Yes, father. The court is filled with soldiers. And they won't like it if you go and complain against one of them. No, I will not let this go just like that. Punishment should be given to those who harassed my wife. Mika was shattered by what had happened. He thought he could get justice from the courts. The next day, Mika went to meet the judge. Next, Mika, what's your complaint? Your Honor, when I was not at my house, two soldiers came to my house and... Stop it. This is not the place to bring charges against the soldiers. Give me your complaint in writing and I'll forward it to the concerned authorities. Then why are you sitting here? Aren't you sitting there to hear the complaints? Watch your mouth. I am the judge and I can punish you if you offend me any more. I don't care. If you can't give justice to the poor, then you shouldn't be here. God, kick him out of here and give him a taste of justice. How dare you? Huh. You want to file a complaint against us? Here. Here, take this. Ah! Mika got beaten by the soldiers. He was very much disappointed. All his life he had worked hard to live a respectable life and today his wife was harassed. The judge insulted him and he got beaten by the soldiers. He had also lost all of his savings in the market today. But Mika was a man of faith. He decided to start working again to repay his debts and to get his house in order. But one day, when Mika had gone to the nearby town, an army of soldiers came to his fields. The king had given away the village of Moshe to the soldiers for building their houses. But the farmers of Moshe didn't know about this. The soldiers marched in to send the farmers away. Hey, look! There's a huge army coming towards here. Maybe that's our sons coming home. But I don't have a good feeling about this. People of Moshe, the army is taking over this village. You must leave this land immediately. You can stay here and be our slaves if you want. What? This is our land. We your slaves? Never. If you resist, then we'll have to use force. We will never let you take our land. We will fight to our death. Yeah, we will never let you step into our fields. Soldiers, attack! The villagers resisted the army and what followed was a brutal massacre. Most of the villagers were killed and their houses were burned down. When Mikar returned, all that was left of his family and his house was ashes. No! Oh God! Those 50 soldiers killed my wife, my son, my daughter. What am I going to do? Where is the Holy One of Israel? Where is the God who came down to free us from Egypt? 
Don't you have the eyes to see the fields soaked in blood of the farmers? Enough. I can't go on anymore. I'm going to join my family. Mika. Huh? Who are you? I am God, whom you challenged. If you are God, then allow me to join my wife and children. I know your pain. You lost your wife and children. They are my children. I watched my children falling by the sword. Their cry pierced my heart. Then, why do you keep quiet? Mika, you won't understand my pain now. Your children are safe with me. Then please, please allow me to join them. Not yet. Your pain will turn into fury and strength. Go and face the commanders, the judges and the king. They rejected me. Make them drink the cup of my wrath. But, but Lord, I'm old and ignorant. Fear not. You will be filled with my spirit. Micah was filled with the spirit of the Lord. Receiving the strength, Micah became a new man and started his mission. Dayton, you coward! You murdered! Huh? You slaughtered my wife and children! You shed the blood of innocent! Who is he? That's Micah, the owner of this place where we built this house. So what? Guards, arrest that lunatic! Get away! Oh! Hmm. But when the guards came to arrest him, they got terrified because Micah was filled with God's spirit. You think you can live in peace in those houses? This mud was soaked in my sweat! This land smells of my children. Why don't you do anything? Uh, I, I am scared. You took over our fields. The hand of the Lord is about to fall upon you. Why did you let him go away after he said so much? It's true. Everything he said was true. Our hands are stained with blood. Mika burning with the fury of Lord, walked to Jerusalem, the capital. After warning the judges there, he then proceeded to the palace to meet the king. Isn't that Micah? Yes, he is. But he, he looks so different now. Hey, did you hear that he terrorized the commander Dayton this morning? It seems the spirit of the Lord is upon him. All right. I think Mika has become a real prophet. You took over our fields. Ahaz, you corrupted one. How dare you sit on the throne of my servant David? Huh? You flooded the streets of Jerusalem with the blood of innocence. Shut up. This is the royal court. So, you are the high priest? Yes, I am. How dare you slaughter innocent babies in the name of sacrifices? Huh? It was. It was sacrifice to the Lord. You coward! Couldn't you cut your own throat and offer a sacrifice? Who asked you to offer human sacrifices? Stop it! I am the king in this country. I decide on laws and there are courts to ensure it. Because of you, Zion will become a claw land. Jerusalem a heap of rubble and the mountain of temple will turn into a forest. Your Majesty, should we still tolerate this? Your days are numbered. A king will come from Bethlehem. He will rule in peace and justice. Shut up! It is God who made the king over this land. And God will pull you down from your throne. You robbed the poor and crossed the weak. Why is king letting him talk like that? This is what God asks of you. Act justly, love tenderly, and walk humbly. Jerusalem will be purified in fire. It will again become the city of peace and justice. Mika challenged everyone in authority, but no one dared to touch him. God was protecting him. 
and in a few days the Philistines captured Morsheth and destroyed the city. Thus the words of Micah were fulfilled. Micah went around the towns and villages proclaiming the message of peace and justice. He was a man who was filled with the Spirit of God. So that was the story of Micah. Did you all like it? Yes, Father. Good. Then shall I ask you a few questions from the story? Yes, Father. All right. Then tell me the meaning of the name Micah. The name Micah was derived from the Hebrew word Michael, which means one who is like God. Hmm. That's very good, Lucy. Now tell me where Micah was born. Micah was born in the city of Mors. Very good, Matthew. Now tell me, what was the first tragedy that happened in his life? Micah had to send his sons away for war. As per the orders of King Ahaz, that was the first tragedy. Correct. Now I want you all to repeat this verse from Micah with me. Yes, Father. Act justly. Act justly. Love tenderly. Love tenderly. And walk humbly with your God. And walk humbly with your God. Now let's say that together. Act justly. Love tenderly. And walk humbly with your God. That's very good. Now before we leave for the day, let me tell you which story I'm going to tell you tomorrow. Which story is that, Father? Tomorrow, I'm going to tell you the story of a prophet who was sent by the Lord to call the whole nation to conversion. A prophet who was made holy by the Holy God. The story of Isaiah. Alright, that's all for today. See you again tomorrow.